Hey guys, welcome to my channel. In today's video, as you can tell by the title, I'm going to be guys how to save money and create an effective budget. So in order to save money, I do feel like you have to create a visual budget, whether it's by paper, whether it's electronically, you have to be able to see your numbers. Numbers can be intimidating, especially when we're talking about money, okay? I get it. Math was never my favorite subject, but my money is very important to me. So I wanna know what's coming into my household and I wanna know what's going out in my household every single month. I have to know. I work too hard, that's just what it is. <laughs> first things first, budgeting is going to get you on track to saving money. So creating that budget, getting real with yourself, looking at the numbers, reviewing what you're spending your money on, all of the eat now, all of the spur of the moments. We have them, we all do. Don't beat yourself up. All of that needs to be accounted for every single month and you can decide how you're going to allocate your money. Now, that is going to be the starting point, okay? That's the starting point for anyone. Now, this is not how to make more money. This is not how to budget if I don't have any money. I'm not here to sell you any dreams. I'm just here to be, you know, honest and real with y'all. You have to have some type of income coming in in order to start budgeting and start getting on the right path. If it's low income, it's okay. I was a low income earner when I first started my budget journey. I was a single mom on top of that. So my expenses were different, but I still managed to start. Now, was it perfect was it always good no i had months where i was in the negative because i had so many more bills than i had income coming in but i knew it ahead of time so maybe i gave myself a month in advance to get caught up or to figure out how i was going to bring in some extra income you don't know that if you're not budgeting you don't know that if you don't know what money is coming into your household and what's going on so that's why i say it's important to just get started with the budget now once you've determine your budget, you see the numbers and you determine, hey, I actually have way more money coming in, but at the end of the month, I don't have this money in my account. Where is this money going? What am I doing with this money? Is it because I have so much money coming in that I don't even realize I'm just spending, spending, spending or swiping, swiping, swiping? Sometimes we do that when all of our bills are paid. We think it's all good. I can spend what I wanna spend because my bills are paid, which is true. But if you're looking to save money, then before you start to swipe, 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 you need to get a number that is going to work and allocate that amount of money every month to your savings. Don't try to overdo it just because you have $500 left over every month, but you know that you're swiping, swiping, swiping every month and you really don't have this money left over because you're eating out here, you're going to the bar here, you're buying drinks for everybody. You may not be able to easily stop that. Some people can, some people can't, and we're not trying to, you know, cause you to go into a depressive state because you're not being, you're not able to do the things you used to do. I still want you to enjoy life. I still want you to enjoy the money that you're making okay because you're the one working hard to make that money but I am saying be real with yourself be reasonable with yourself as well and figure out a dollar amount that you can put towards your savings every single month now, if you have debt then you need to determine how much money you're going to pay off first if you want to be someone who saves money and pays off debt at the same time I did it then you know come up with the amount you want to pay towards debt and say that every month, regardless, I'm going to put this towards debt and every month I'm going to put this towards savings and then that's that. So we're going to first get into how to create a budget because that is our starting point. And then once we've come up with the mock budget, I'll come back and talk to you guys about more ways to save some money. All right guys, so the first thing you wanna do when you are starting a budget, however you're doing it, whether you're doing it electronically or pen and paper, you're gonna go ahead and list your income. That way you know exactly how much all of your expenses should add up to. So we're gonna use $3,000, which is a good 
in between so it's not too low but it's pretty average for a lot of people today three thousand dollars is what your expenses should add up to after you have totaled them so we're going to go ahead and list out your fixed expenses these are what I call necessities to live a productive life, things that we need in order to survive. So we're gonna go ahead and list out fixed expenses. So things like your rent, your mortgage, fall under fixed expenses. You need a house or a place to live in order to survive. You have your expenses that go with renting a place. So you have your electricity, you may have water, you may even have gas, but a lot of people don't have gas. So we're not going to list gas, but if you do list it. So we also have things like a car if you have a car note that is something you need in order to get to point a to point b get back and forth to work you need a car if you don't have a car note then you put transportation how are you getting to and from your destinations whether it's uber riding a bus the train whatever your transportation is it's a means for you to get around and it needs to be accounted for then if you do own a car i'm pretty sure you have car insurance and if you have a car note, I'm pretty sure you have to have full coverage on that insurance. So then you have other things that are considered necessities as well to some people. Some people they may not, like a phone, your internet, cable, things that you feel that you need in order to live a sane life. But instead of putting those under our fixed expenses, we're gonna put those under variables because they can vary. You know, you don't always have to have the best cable, the best internet. You can make some adjustments to those things or you can do away with them altogether. So let's go ahead and put those under variables. And even your phone, you may think, oh, I can't live without my phone, but maybe it's, the plan you're on. Maybe you don't need a $100 plan. Maybe you can go down to a $50 plan or you can change from an iPhone to, you know, a different type of phone in order to survive. Those are variables. So phone, bill, your internet, your cable. So to me, those are variables. Those are, if I had to start cutting back in order to save money or figure out a better budget, those would be the first bills I look at in order to adjust my budget. My rent is gonna be my rent for the time being. If I signed a year contract, a yearly lease or a six months lease, I know for the next however many months, that's what my rent is gonna be. My electricity, I have to have lights, I have to have water. I'm in a car note for three to five years, so that is what it's gonna be unless I refinance. And then my car insurance, you can always shop around for car insurance. So that could very well possibly go under variables, however you wanna look at it. So let's say the rent is about $900. I'm in Texas. I don't know what your rent is in different areas. I know it can be more. I know it can be less. Just adjust it to your rent and your living arrangements. If you don't rent, you live with someone, you just give them something every month, put that down. Your electricity, let's say it's about $100. Your water bill, let's estimate about $60. Car note roughly 350 and insurance roughly 150. And then your phone, I do not believe a phone should be more than $100. If it is, you need to adjust. Your internet, let's go with 75. And then if you have cable, I don't know. I feel like cable is, is a thing of the past so we're not going to include that we're going to include our monthly subscriptions so if you have like netflix hulu amazon prime we'll focus on those so let's do subscriptions if i can spell say amazon prime and netflix is twenty dollars so those are some of your variable expenses they can include other things just those things that you can possibly adjust if need be or do away with that is what i consider the variables they vary 
and then you're like okay what about fun money what about my home when i gotta go and get groceries or have to go and get laundry detergent so that category you can call it what you want i call it cash envelope category but i don't really do cash anymore so i haven't really came up with a new category for it but i used to take out a certain amount of cash for each of these items in that category and once that money was done i was pretty much done for the month for those categories but now i don't really use cash so it just falls under things like my groceries or food but i say groceries because i feel like if you eat out or do something that is a separate category from your groceries for the home and then i do have a home category gas category for the car and fun category so groceries for the home roughly estimate 300 i know groceries are expensive you do not have to tell me i know home could be things like laundry detergent dishwashing liquid dryer sheets bleach cleaning supplies but you don't have to buy those items every single month and if you do then i mean you may have a big family and it may require you to but we're going to estimate fifty dollars if you work from home you're probably not utilizing that much gas but if you don't work from home then you probably are so we're just going to estimate about 200 of course you tailor it to what you spend a month in your categories and if you don't get paid monthly and you get paid bi-weekly you break these numbers down by each check okay this is just a full monthly overview and then fun money can include eating out with friends or eating out by yourself going to the movies going to a bar anything that you may consider fun if you have maintenance where you go and you get your hair done your nails done and things of that nature you're gonna have to have a category for each of these things because we are calculating and accounting for every single thing we spend money on but for this person, we're gonna keep it simple. So you have your fixed, your variables, and then whatever you wanna call this category. These are your necessities as well. You need groceries to survive. You need cleaning supplies and stuff to keep your home in order. You need gas money to travel. And you don't necessarily need fun money, but I feel like if you're working hard and you're going to work every single day, having some money for yourself is vital because you're going to get burnt out just working for nothing because regardless if you have a roof over your head food on the table that's not always a feeling of reward to someone who is working a lot and doing what is necessary it is okay to spend money on yourself okay i am a firm believer in that i am one of those okay <laughs> okay so then we get to the not so fun part if you have debt we definitely have to list out our debt outside of a car note that would be considered debt but if you're not actively working to pay it off i don't necessarily put it in the debt category until you're focused on paying that debt off because at the end of the day we all need a car well we don't need but most of us have cards so for debt we're going to say this person has a credit card and they have a loan and they have student loans so all of these categories should equal up to a grand total your grand total should be no more than the income that you're bringing in for the month if it is then it's time to look at cutting back the first thing i say is look at these work your way from bottom to top and see what you can cut back or get some discounts on and then go look at these and see maybe I don't need to eat that much maybe I need to eat some noodles for the month <laughs> maybe I don't need to be driving to everybody's event this month because this amount is not covering my grand total so the grand total comes to two thousand eight hundred seventy four dollars and ninety nine cents so i am currently in the green now there are going to be months that you may not be in the green you may have done some extra spending bought some clothes some miscellaneous things happened and this 
number is bigger than this number it happens and that means you're going to have to make some adjustments if it's happening right now this is your first time budgeting and you don't know what to do that means it's time to call up some bill collectors and ask them if they have any specials or discounts maybe you have to move on to a new company because this is not aligning in your budget and that's okay as well because in order to get to a point where you want to pay off this credit card you want to pay off this loan you want to pay off the student loans and eventually you want to pay off that car note at a faster rate because the longer you take paying this minimum payment on that credit card the balance is just going to keep growing and with the fed hikes and interest rates that credit card is being affected so this minimum payment is not putting a dent in whatever the balance is and you're going to eventually owe more than what you use the credit card for okay so our goal is to pay off debt in this case you have some money left over from what you got paid now once all of your bills are paid you can take that 120 five dollars that's left over and put it towards that credit card or put it towards that loan or student loan or whichever debt that you're looking to pay off quicker and then that's one less bill you're going to have to worry about and then you can allocate that money towards your next bill and then allocate that money towards the next one and then before you know it all of these bills are, are being paid off and then you can get to the saving money you have all of this plus whatever's left over from here that you can begin to save towards a new house, save towards a new car, save towards a family vacation, whatever the case may be. Once you don't have any more debt, you can start to attack your savings. If you want to continue to save at the same rate as paying off debt, maybe from that 125 left over here, you can just take the 25 put it to your savings and take the hundred and add it to your minimum payments. Whatever is going to work for you. I'm just showing you guys a mock budget. It's going to take you implementing and doing the work on your end to make this align with what you have going on. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember, this is not the catch all be all this is just a mock budget it's going to look different for everyone there's going to be more bills there possibly can be less bills it really just depends on what you have going on okay all right guys so i hope you have enjoyed the video thus far i hope you got some tips on how to get started with your own budget how to create your own budget it doesn't have to be complicated it doesn't have to be fancy you just got to get started okay so now we have a budget and you see this person didn't have a lot of money left over after all of their bills were accounted for but they had a little bit and i am someone who believes that every dollar should have a place meaning that even though you have this amount left over and i like to have a buffer in my account so at the end of the month whether it's 30 days 31 days or 28 days that last day of the month, I'm going to take my buffer and put it where I said I was going to put it at the beginning of the month. If it's still there, things come up, stuff happens, miscellaneous things happen that I didn't account for. And I'm not talking about, oh, you went out, because, but unexpectedly, no, I'm talking about real life things happen. Maybe, I don't know, you got pulled over because you were speeding. That's something that you didn't predict even though you knew you were speeding but you didn't think you were gonna get a ticket right so those are things that i'm talking about i'm not talking about the things that you knew or you knew what you were doing and you try to go and spend that money on that no okay <laughs> let's get that right so at the end of the month i should have 125 dollars left over that 125 dollars is either going to go to my debt payment on the debt that i'm working on paying off or if I don't have any debt, I am going to put it towards my savings and I'm going to start saving money every single month with that buffer. And I wait until the last day of the month to put it where I say I'm going to put it because stuff happens, right? And I don't want my account to be at zero and then come the 30th, something major happens and I don't have any money in my account. That's the way I think, I mean, you know, whatever works for you i always say that but 
yeah a budget is just one way to save some money how else are you going to save money well you got to make money to save money so if you are in need of an increase in pay you're going to start looking around for ways to make some extra side income or you might even be looking at a career change because i didn't really get to start hitting my debt until i started bringing in more income when I was consistent on YouTube and I was making money, when I was getting a tax return, I would just put that in my savings. I wouldn't spend that money. Any extra money that was coming into my household that I did not account for over time work, um, I got a bonus at work. Any extra money that is not a regular in my income, I would put it towards savings because if I didn't have this money or if it never came, I would have never needed it, if that makes sense. Like, I wasn't dependent on this money, so don't make it something that I depend on now. Put that in your savings. I'm trying to make it make sense, but I hope I am making it make sense. So any extra money that you're not expecting, put it in your savings because you wasn't expecting that money anyway. So pretend that it's still not there and put it in your savings. I think it takes discipline when it comes to saving money. If it was easy to save money, everybody would have stacks on stacks saved. And that's just not the case because we know it's not easy to save save money but it is possible and nobody likes to be you know without money so if you don't want to be in a bad position don't put yourself in a bad position set yourself up to be in a good position if a rainy day happens we're not planning for any rainy days we're not saying any rainy days are going to happen but if they do I'm okay or I'm going to be okay. And you don't even have to plan for a rainy day, plan for a vacation, plan for to do something special for yourself. And in order to do those things, you have to have X amount of money to do it. Plan for good times. Save for those things that are gonna excite you, that are going to keep you motivated to save the money, that's going to push you to save the money. Maybe I wanna get married in 2024, and in order for me to get married in 2024, I gotta save $10,000. Well, then I know if this is something that I'm set on doing because I really want this specific date, then I'm going to push through and save that money. So I think it's important to set goals for yourself and set realistic goals and set goals that are going to fuel the fire in you. Don't set goals because he or she set a goal and you think that it's gonna align. That's not gonna motivate you. You know you. And I don't, I don't care if it's some ice cream that's gonna motivate you. Like if I was to tell my daughter, in order for us to go get ice cream this weekend, I need you to save your $2. You think she ain't gonna save that $2? Cause she gonna want some ice cream. So she is motivated by the ice cream this weekend. So she's gonna put her $2 up to get that ice cream this weekend. Those are things that you have to do for yourself. Sometimes we're just kids and adult bodies, okay? And <laughs> we have to have those little goals in order to get to the big goal. So I hope this video was helpful. I don't wanna take up too much more of you guys' time. I just wanted to come and show you guys how to create an effective budget. It doesn't take a lot. It doesn't have to be complicated. It's really simplistic. It just takes you doing the work. It takes discipline. And when you become disciplined and you become somebody that wants more and you set these goals to get to whatever that more is for you, whatever's gonna fuel you, you're gonna do what you need to do in order to save. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below if there's any specific videos that you guys would like to see in regards to finance. Subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.